please. Mayor Roland Dykes. Present. Vice Mayor Mike Prophet. Present. Alderman Mike Hansel. Here. Alderman Bobby Knight. Here. Alderwoman Luanna Ottinger. Here. Alderman Steve Smith. Here. City Attorney Terry Hurst. Here. City Administrator James Fincham. Here. We do have a quorum present. We can do the business of the city. Approval of the minutes of the previous meeting from the regular session from January 12th, 2021. They've been included in your notebook. Are there any questions, additions, deletions from those minutes? Hearing none, we'll please uh, be the motion to approve as presented. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, we do have a motion on the board to approve the minutes of the regular session for January 12th, 2021. It has been properly seconded. Please signify your approval by aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Proclamations and a recognition of citizens by the mayor, <coughs> of which I have none at the moment. Any of the aldermen have anything they'd like to <coughs> Okay. Uh, um, moving on, communications from our city administrator. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, COVID update since last month, we're continuing to move along uh, as best as possible following our protocol set forward by the governor and the CDC. Uh, still feel like we're doing a really good job, although we did finally have our first little outbreak within one department. Uh, we had three individuals to test positive in one department and um, as a result of that I put forth an executive order re requiring any employee that uh, has knowingly been exposed to COVID to notify their supervisor. You'd think that's common sense but um, and we had not had a problem with that prior to this but we did have an employee that, from what it appears, was exposed, uh, knew he was exposed, and chose to tell no one. And came in, caused two of his fellow employees to be uh, infected, and caused the entire that part of the department to be quarantined. So that just shows you how easy it is to, for that stuff to, to get in on you. So I did put an order in place that uh, makes it a violation uh, to not notify a supervisor if you know you have been exposed and you come in and expose your fellow workers to that potential, then you can face disciplinary action. Now moving forward, I consulted with uh, City Attorney Hurst uh, before that I drew that up. I had him look at it to make sure he was good with it. And so uh, we have put that in place and to make you all aware of it. The, uh, the ladder truck, uh, I've, I've talked to most of you, I think, about this. There is a letter that is in the, the pocket of your book uh, from me to you. And our, uh, the ladder truck broke down. And uh, Chief Shelton uh, had it looked at and had two quotes on it. And the lowest quote was over $10,000. And so, per our purchasing policy, uh, under normal circumstances, anything over $10,000 must be brought before you guys and, and put out the bid. But in emergency circumstances or when time is of the essence, our policy states that we can go ahead and do that and that I must notify you all in writing at the next council meeting, which is tonight that I have done that and I did it under that rule and I put a copy of that rule behind your letter so you can look at it. And we do have on the agenda tonight the uh, funding for that because there was no money in the budget to pay for that. It's such a large expense. Uh, so that will have to be added to the budget. But we have that on the agenda tonight for, for y'all's uh, consideration. This was something, if you have any question about it for Chief Shelton, he can give you better details on it. We put a list in there of what all had to be done. But the truck uh, was basically incapacitated. We only have one ladder truck, and we had to get it back up and running. And we felt time was of the essence. And so uh, we try, we're trying to get another six or seven years out of this truck. 
it's got quite a few years on it, but we've done a lot of work to it to, to keep it upgraded and keep it uh, in service. And uh, we want the, our goal is to keep it active for another at least another six years. It was seven years last year, so now we're getting into the six-year territory, into the new year. We have a capital plan on replacing it. Uh, those things are not cheap. They're nearly a million dollars for that piece of equipment. So uh, we're trying to keep that one uh, operational uh, without having to do that. We did find a grant. Gary found a grant that would pay up to, I think it was 50%, up to 500000 But the trucks cost about nine something. So that was still, you're still talking about a lot of money. So we chose, uh, we chose to pass on the, uh, the opportunity to apply for that grant because Tina has a, a very comprehensive capital plan that's going to allow us to, when the trucks that we, the lights trucks we bought, uh, we bought on a lease purchase. And when, that, when the purchase is up and they belong to us, we can get the, the, uh, the ladder truck for about the same amount, so we'll just keep paying that same payment. So it won't be a, a new drain on the budget process. It'll be just going back to, to the, just keeping the payment we were making already and having the new truck. So we're trying not to add added expense into the process. Um, Last month, we talked about the grammar school roof, and uh, we asked for permission for uh, Mrs. Burchett and the board to get bids. And uh, they got those back. She has handed the, handed the sheet out to y'all. Uh, she only got that back, uh, well, she, on, she came down here yesterday, and then she, she, uh, she missed me, and she came back this morning. So I only got this this morning. So it was not able to be placed on the agenda, but she would like for you all to vote to suspend the rule and add that to the agenda so that it can be voted on tonight to fund the roof, to, to appropriate the funds for the roof. They're wanting to move forward with it. So now that's up, uh, that's you all's preference. Uh, if you want to add it to the agenda, uh, you can, if you choose to, to say you wanted it uh, at March, then we'll, we'll do it at the March meeting. But she's in, she's in attendance and uh, she has asked that you all consider suspending the rule and adding that to the agenda. So I'll give you a little bit, giving you a heads up, give you some time to think about it before the mayor gets into the agenda. The other issue that I have is a similar issue, it's uh, with the utility board. The, many years ago, the city went into an agreement with the utility board that we would give them $10,000 uh, at a whack to allow people that did not hook up to the sewer but kept their septic tanks to help them make the transition if their septic tank fails. Uh, we pay up to $2,500 per household to assist them in getting switched from the septic tank to the sewer line. Generally, the, generally that means uh, acquiring a T, I think it's a T called a T1 pump that goes into the septic tank and pumps the sewage into the sewer line. And so uh, they notified us, uh, I guess yesterday maybe, um, that they only they have two people that have requested that funding and they only have enough money in the fund to do one and so uh, again uh, that's something that came in past the deadline for me to put it on the agenda uh, and if you all would like to suspend the rule and add that to the agenda tonight that can also be done but again that's at your pleasure uh, I'm just making you aware that they're here tonight on a separate issue and they had talked about they'd like for that to, to be brought up if there was any way possible and that's the only way it can be done is to suspend the rule and add it to the agenda. Otherwise, uh, we'll have it on the agenda in, uh, in March. Now we did suggest that since uh, they have enough to fund one and not the second one to whoever the first one was that come in to go ahead and do that one and then on the second one, if they can't do that and then let us reimburse them once it's approved, then uh, we'll just have to wait if y'all don't want to put it on the agenda tonight. 
So I don't know if they decided. I'm sure they had to run that up the flagpole. But uh, I don't know if that was ever agreed to by them or not to go ahead and fund that and then take it out when we, when we do replenish the, uh, the fund to, to go ahead and take that back out. So that's, uh, that's the two, that's two things that I, I got hit with after the agendas went out, uh, both of which wanted it to, uh, to be addressed tonight if possible. So all I can do is make you aware of it and it's, it's up to you what you want to do with it. That's all I got, Mayor. What's the board's pleasure? I don't, I don't see any sense in delaying it if it's already, you know, to me, this is just my opinion. Delaying it, go ahead and get it over with, let them get started on their project, to me. We need a motion. Yeah, to, we'll, we'll need a motion to approve, add it to the agenda. Yes, a motion to amend the rules, add it to the agenda. Okay. I'll make that motion. And, and excuse me, uh, do you, is that in reference to both of them or just the school? Or well, I don't think it's not both of them if, if you're going to be able to get one of them, get it started and get it out of the way, you know. Then the roof, I mean, just go ahead and get started on it. So, so your motion is to add them both to the I, agenda? I do. Okay. All right, we do have a motion there. Are, are you guys comfortable with proceeding on at this point? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of like what uh, the vice mayor said. We we got to do it. So the the quicker you knock it out, you can move on to something else. So I mean, you're just postponing the inevitable to put it off to March. Okay. Well, I'll second that. Okay. All right, we have a motion on the board to suspend the rules and add two items to the agenda. Uh, one regarding uh, new grammar school roof and uh, NU sewer system. It's been properly seconded. Please signify your acceptance roll by aye. Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry, we need a roll call. Alderman Mike Hansel? Yes. Alderman Bobby Knight? Yes. Alderwoman Luanna Ottinger? Yes. Alderman Steve Smith? Yes. Vice Mayor Mike Prophet? Yes. Thank you, Tina. All right, next item on the agenda. Is that all you had? Yes, sir. Thank Thank you. You. Okay. Item number six, appointment of board commissions and committees. Item A, consideration of appointment to Newport Utilities Board for Jeff Fancher's term. We'll make a motion to appoint Mike Cannon to the Newport Utilities Board. I make the motion to appoint Jeff Fancher back on the board to the point of well, we got one motion. I think on the board uh, you'll have to address the first motion one first. Motion at time. Oh. If it gets a second. Second. All right. We have a motion on the board to to appoint Mike Hannon to the Newport Utility Board. It's been properly seconded. We'll approve by roll call, please. Alderman Mike Hansel? Yes. Alderman Bobby Knight? Yes. Alderwoman Luanna Ottinger? Yes. Alderman Steve Smith? No. Vice Mayor Mike Prophet? No, but if it's going to come to <coughs> three to vote, I, can we rescind our vote after this? I mean, well, you can change your vote, I'm sure. I mean, that's up to Terry, but sure. I would think you could change your vote. Yeah. Okay, if we don't have the votes, I don't care to. It's going to pass either way, so it doesn't matter. Well, I, I don't know. <coughs> Uh, I want Jeff, but if Jeff's not going to get it, then I don't, my hand, is everybody qualified to, it's uh, being nominated, they got property and stuff in the city limits? Yes, that's been verified uh, and by our city attorney, and he, does, he is a qualified city property owner. Well, if he's already going to get it, I still vote for Jeff, and then that'll be three, two, well, I'd, I'd love to clarify that. To my understanding, uh, Mike Hannon owns property in the city by inheritance and that he has been registered to vote in the city. The, the requirement is that he be a registered voter in the city. Of course, you become a registered voter by owning property in the city. And it's uh, my understanding. I do not know for a fact. Well, I think we, um, he has a... Uh, 
gave us a copy of the uh, the will that showed where it, it was bequeathed to him uh, by his late mother to him and his two sisters. They're, they're all three named in the will as uh, the property being left to them. Is that acceptable, Tommy Hurt? Yeah, uh, yes, the property is White Oak Avenue, which is in the city of Newport. Uh, whether by will or not, when his mother died, he became a property owner. Uh, so I've not got a bit of problem with Mike Hannon. I think the world doesn't go from anything in the world. I just want it to be up front, you know, that's all. We can still leave the vote. Well, when, you know, just for clarity, you know, when, when we were quizzed about it here last week, we could find no record of him owning property in the city. So that was the only thing we could report back to the board members that request, that ask about that. Because on our tax rolls, there was no record of him owning property in the city. But the property is still in his late mother's name. And he's been coming in paying the taxes on it. And they just had never done anything else with it after that she passed and it was in the will, it was left to the three children. Then they just left it in her name, which is Essie Barton. And um, when uh, City Attorney Hurst uh, contacted us and told us that that, that that meets the requirement being in a will, and even like he said, even if there is no will, uh, then that changed the dynamic of it uh, once he produced the will. But when I reported to you gentlemen uh, last week uh, and lady uh, that, uh, that we could not find where he owned property, we could not. We could not find where he, where he owned any property in the city. And uh, just like I, I told Mr. Hurst uh, and the mayor, you know, that's all we have to go by is the, the tax roll. If, uh, if somebody says, well, to such and such on property, then the only thing we can, uh, the only database we have to look at is the tax roll. And so when he did not appear on the tax roll, all we could say is we don't have a record of it. And, that's, and I think that's what I reported to y'all. But, uh, but that's what changed it was when, when Mr. Hurst become aware of, of the situation and, uh, and found out about the will, that changed it. So I didn't want y'all. Um, I didn't want y'all to think that we led you wrong. Uh, we told you what we knew based on what we had to work with. That's all we knew was that he was not on. His name was not on the tax base anywhere. And understand, this is not an unusual situation. When someone dies, uh, there's nobody to make a deed. So, but but the deed that person would have would be the deed of their parent or whoever they inherited the property and that's how they would reference a new deed if Mike ever decided to sell it so but uh, when his mother died he became a property owner on that date you're satisfied with I'm, I'm satisfied that he's a legal uh, property owner in the city of Newport and I understand I don't know for a fact but I understand he has been registered to vote, which is the primary qualification that he was approved to vote in city election. Just leave it three to two then, that's what it is. Are there any more questions? I think the vote has been taken. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. My candidate be appointed by a vote of three to two. Item B. Consideration of appointment to the beer board, Dennis Thornton's term. Dennis Thornton, is that correct? That's the way I understand it. Yes, that's correct. I'll make a motion to put Dennis back on the beer board. That's what he wants. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the board to reappoint Dennis Thornton to the beer board. It has been properly seconded. Please signify your, your acceptance by aye. 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 All opposed. Hearing none, motion carries. Item C is consideration of appointment to the Planning Commission, Mansfield McMahon's term. Mansfield don't want it. Right. That's yes. correct. Mr. McMahon has expressed that he would like to be replaced on the Planning Commission. That's Terry White. Is that what? Terry White's looking at now. Is that correct? Is, I, uh, so Regina had. Um, 
I didn't get a chance to confirm with Regina about everything. Is that what you've been? That's what I, I talked to Regina. Okay. That's what yeah. that's what Regina told me. Of course, okay. Regina Regina serves as the, the the secretary to the 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 beer to the to the planning commission, so she's privy to what what go what's going on. And um, she had said that, uh, and I don't know if uh, some of the somebody, some of the board members came up with Mr. White or whatever, but Mr. White had agreed to to serve if if appointed. Yeah, yeah, and I I hadn't gotten a chance to confirm that with her because either late yesterday or today. So that's where I was in the dark yeah. a little bit. But I, if, as long as that's still. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. my that, right. that's yeah. my understanding. Yes. yes. Okay. And and just for the record, R Regina has been out of pocket because her father passed away, so she was not here today, and will be out the rest of the week. So that's that's why we're a little yeah. discombobulated. Yeah. He didn't get to check with her because she wasn't here today. Okay. All right. Uh, need a motion. I made a motion to put Terry White on the bureau. Second plan. Okay. All right, we have a motion on the board to approve Terry White as to be appointed to the Planning Commission. It has been properly seconded. Are there any questions to the motion? Okay, hearing none, please signify your acceptance by aye. Aye. Uh, All opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Terry White. Item seven is reports from committees, members of council, and other officers. Town of Preservation Alliance. I don't have anything additional that wasn't in the report. Uh, Walter State's been having classes for a couple weeks now. Lucas and the partnership are pretty much completely moved in. He's doing some uh, work in his office, uh, so it's making a mess, and I'm mad at him. But other than that, uh, everything's the the top floor is. Um, is pretty much occupied and had an elevator guy up today to look at it. I think he, the, 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 when they came before there wasn't electricity in the building, they seemed to think that a little bit of service on the existing elevator would work again. Um, and the guys that were up there today sort of had the same thought. They said it is an obsolete unit, so once it goes down, there's no replacement. We're going to have to replace the actual uh, mechanical equipment in it. Um, so it'll just be something that we'll decide when that comes up. But for right now, they're getting pricing back to me on that sort of thing. Okay. Anyone else like to add anything on the for the town building? Okay. Is that it, Gary? Is that all? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I don't have any old business to report. It's item nine. We'll begin with new business. Item A is consideration of resolution number 2021-01, authorizing the city of Newport to close the portion of Old Knoxville Highway that crosses the property at 249 West Broadway. Terry, if I say something that's not uh, accurate here, jump, chime in, but most of what, what we're closing off is part that actually runs across this piece of property that's been purchased by Mr. Faust. Um, it's been, a road for so long that it has basically become a right of way even though it goes straight across his property. So we're going to uh, close that access. We've had the discussion about it in the Planning Commission. We brought it up here last month and had the public, the online public forum a couple, no it was just last week. Um, but we've gone through all the steps. We don't have any major objections to it. Plus, it is running straight across the middle, well, not the middle, the edge of the property. So um, I'll get with Superintendent Hicks if we decide to go forward with this and come up with a plan on how we will t um, shut it down, what we will do to temporarily shut it down until um, Mr. Faust's site gets his site plan in and we understand sort of what the property is going to look like. That's the plan right now. And I uh, spoke with you earlier about potentially widening the existing ingress, egress for uh, Old Knoxville Highway as it may not be big enough to accommodate two vehicles. But we, uh, again, Mr. Hicks and I will ass um, assess that. Okay. Anybody have any questions about those plans? I went up there and looked at it several times and I don't see any problem with it myself. There's no opposition. 
I didn't know. Uh, when you do something uh, like that, then it impacts the community. We already have uh, traffic, a lot of traffic that comes up that, that road. I live in the community, uh, Mayor lives in the community, Bobby lives in the community. Uh, can attest to the amount of traffic that comes up that road fast. And there's a sign that says 15 miles per hour, I think. But you're saying they're coming up Jaybird? Yes. Okay. It won't change. It won't no. change the amount of traffic coming up Jaybird, will it? You know what? I think it will impact the, the traffic coming up Jaybird. I think. I don't have any kind of evidence to speak on that one way or another. I've not done traffic. I mean, I and I wouldn't know. I don't even know if I'd know how to do that. I'd have to ask somebody smarter than me. Well, the, the thing that I have, the question I have is if it impacts the, the traffic up through Jaybird and um, from talking with my uncle who when he was the mayor, I always said that we couldn't have speed bumps, but the traffic is really off the charts up that hour, especially up that street, especially during the summer. That if I'm understanding you, that seems like a separate issue that, that that this wouldn't affect because you're not you're only turning traffic off. If anything, it's taking traffic off of Jaybird because they'll go a different route, or they'll cut right and then take an immediate right to get back on Jaybird. It won't add. I don't. Well, most people that come up along the highway rather than go up Jaybird because of that the Melton Street and that curve right there. So a lot of people use Jaybird rather if they're going all the way around the Melton or even the property of the housing authority. So I'm just saying if you don't have access to Jaybird um, that more traffic is if they need to go around there they're gonna they're going to use Jaybird to get there. I, I don't know. I guess in my opinion, I think if, if there is any increase in traffic, it'll be minimal uh, due to that closure. The only thing I, I could think of is you would go, if you had, if you're on Old Knoxville Highway and you have to get to Jaybird and you don't want to pull out on Broadway, you would go, is Melton the one before Jaybird, right? Uh, it's the one after Jaybird. If you're going west, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah coming the other, around. yeah, you would go, you would cut up Melton to go down Jaybird, but that's local anyway. That's not an increase. I mean, does that make? Well, I would think that most people that 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 would turn on Jaybird now, yeah, and then take a right up Old Knoxville Highway yeah. to get to Melton, they could still do that with the or the other. Uh, exit. Yeah, it'll, yeah right, it's just the other two feet closer. I mean, yeah. you're just It'd a couple a, of feet. Yeah. What, 30, 40, 20 yards, 25 yards or so? Yeah. Up, just up the way? Yeah, so they could still do it that way if they if they really needed to go that route. I think that would be easier and and safer, to be honest with you. Yeah. To make a, instead of making a left and then a quick right to go up on up the right. highway. I feel like if there's an increase, it's going to be an increase on Milton as opposed to Jaybird, just because of cutting it off right there. Uh -huh. yeah. um, but if there's an increase on Milton, you're going to have to come down Jaybird well, to get back to the house. on where you're going. Yeah. You know. um, I, it's already uh, a lot of traffic, and I'm just concerned that it's going to impact more traffic in this street. Okay. All right. Uh, we haven't had a motion yet. No. Did, um, are there any, would anyone else like to be heard on that issue? If not, we need, um, were you going to read this into the, no, into the record? We just need a motion to, need a motion. to approve. If, if it's so. <laughs> yeah, if. Make a motion to approve it. Okay. I, I second that. Okay, we have a motion on the board to approve the re uh, resolution number 2021-01 authorizing the city of Newport to close the portion of Old Knoxville Highway that crosses the property at 249 West Broadway. It's been properly seconded. 
Are there any more questions to the motion? Hearing none, we'll approve by the normal sign of aye. 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 And all opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. Item B is consideration of Newport Utilities to renew the letter of credit with Commercial Bank for the USDA loan and to allow the general manager to sign and sign upcoming letters of renewal. Yes, um, this is for the USDA loan that comes up every year, um, comes up in February. This would allow, um, with your approval, the letter of credit with Commercial Bank, as Mr. Docks stated. Um, and also going forward, this would allow us to do this each year for this one certain letter of credit. Okay. What's the board's pleasure? I think when this, this did come up again last year and it, it, it was approved to be signed, but I think you would have to amend the portion that allows you to not, uh, sign it each year without council approval. Okay. Uh, I think that's what we did last year and I think that probably is going to be the pleasure of the board for this year too. Okay. If, I'm going to hate to speak for everybody, but if you have any questions, please speak up now. No. Uh, I agree. Okay. Okay, then we do need a motion to approve with that with, with that uh, stipulation that we uh, require us uh, to come back inside each year uh, with that motion. Would that be acceptable? Yes, that's perfectly fine. I, I was just thinking that might perhaps streamline the process a little bit, but there's no issue coming back next year. Okay. We can we can definitely accommodate that. All right. Okay, you've heard the motion. I'll make the motion uh, to approve it as amended, like you said. Okay. Second. All right. We have a motion on the board then to approve the consideration of Newport Utilities to renew the letter of credit with Commercial Bank for a USDA loan and to allow the general manager to sign with the stipulation that you uh, not to allow automatic renewals by the general manager. Mm -hmm. Does that accurately state your motion? Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. We have the motion on the board. It's been properly seconded. Please approve by the normal sign of aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, Joni. Item C is consideration of repairs to the ladder and two pump trucks for the Newport Fire Department. Um, this is the issue I told you about earlier <clears throat> and what we did. Uh, we, add, we went ahead and added two of the pump trucks have problems too. So we went ahead and added that amount into this so we go ahead and repair them as well as the, the ladder truck. But if you have any questions about it, uh, you can ask the chief. But this is the issue that I, that I talked to you about earlier except for the, the two pumper trucks. Okay. Do you have anything to add, Jeremy? Uh, it's it I, I want to clarify it's not really two pumper trucks it is a pumper truck and the pump on the ladder truck is, is that and what happened was those the old truck five and the ladder truck failed their pump test and we're we're having to get them upgraded to where they'll they'll pass the pump test so it's it's actually uh, the ladder trucks the part of the structure on the ladder and the ladder trucks pump and truck fives pump and uh, that's what what the deal is with it. <laughs> okay, so we need to amend the this item to to say that it's repaired to the ladder truck and one and a and a pump to the ladder truck. Yes, and then the other pumper truck. And so the it's it's pump. the structural for the ladder and the pump for the ladder, and then one of the pumper trucks pump repairs. Okay, all right. You've heard the presentation from both our city administrator and from uh, Chief Shelton. What's the board's pleasure? Do you have any questions? I make a motion to approve. Okay. I've seconded it. Okay, we have a motion on the board then to approve those repairs as stated by Jeremy Shelton and by the Chief uh, City Administrator, James Benson. Um, it's been properly seconded. Are there any other questions to that motion? Hearing none, please signify your acceptance by aye. Uh, and all opposed. Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. 
Item D is consideration of purchase of AT&T property on 208 Park Street. Again, this is something that, that you all are familiar with. We, we've had multiple discussions about it. For some time, the city has been trying to look for a way to resolve storage problems that we have, especially with our records, our older records. The police department and city hall proper have so many records that we have to maintain for eternity, it seems like. Um, some things you have to keep forever, literally. Uh, some things, you, personnel records, you have to keep so many years beyond death of the person. And um, the police department is busting at the seams. They've got filing cabinets in the hallways and the, the ever broom. And uh, Tina has informed me that we've got about two more years worth of space behind in the back of City Hall here where we do our storage. And so this property just, just came on the market uh, it's the AT&T, uh, the old maintenance property up at the corner of Jefferson and Park Street, and um, it's got uh, it's got the potential to, to to solve this problem for us for the foreseeable future, and it's also uh, it's a versatile piece of property that um, that has four large bays on it that we can utilize. It's got a large par uh, paved and fenced in parking area that we can utilize and it, it will meet a lot of needs that we have. It, it's appraised at around uh, $118,000 but they have agreed to sell it to, to us for $100,000. And so I know that some of you all went up and toured the property. Uh, I've went up, I've been up there two or three times. Um, I've met with the department heads and had them evaluate the property to make sure that it will meet their needs and the consensus uh, amongst all the department heads was that they'd be tickled to have it. And so it's, uh, that's, that's the storyline behind uh, the property and of course it's on the agenda tonight for y'all's consideration. Mr. Board, the pleasure. Any questions? to purchase that property, the ATV property. I'll second. Okay. We have a motion then on the board to uh, consideration of purchase of AT&T property on 208 Park Street. It's been properly seconded. We will approve by roll call, please. Alderman Mike Hansel. Yes. Alderman Bobby Knight. Yes. Alderwoman Luanna Ottinger. Yes. Alderman Steve Smith. Yes. Vice Mayor Mike Prophet. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item E is the one of the additions uh, that uh, we added to the agenda tonight is the NGS uh, Newport Grammar School roof consideration. Now, one thing uh, you'll note in the uh, the sheet that Mrs. Burchett passed out, there are two options on there for the roof. Um, if the city could pay one hundred thousand and them pay seventy thousand. Or the city pay the the 170, and then them be able to knock out more of the stuff on the list going down. Uh, Mrs. Burchett has indicated to me that if the city could do the one the full cost of the roof instead of just doing the partial cost, that that would allow them to get a lot of more stuff done, and they wouldn't have to come back next year uh, to ask for additional funding. My recommendation, and after consulting with the finance director would be uh, based on that, that we go ahead and do the, the full amount. I wanted to, to check with her to make sure we could take that hit, and, uh, and we can. So I would, uh, and she and I discussed it at length, and uh, it's our opinion that we would rather do it right now than to, to, than to take a chance on the unknown down the road while we've got, we know we've got the money to do it, to, do it, to go ahead and get it done. Okay. All right, you've heard the presentation then. Are there questions to the motion? All right, we have them. Could we, we'll need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion to approve uh, the uh, cafeteria and gym lobby roofs at Newport Grammar School for $170,000. It has been properly seconded. Are there any other questions to the motion? Okay. Uh, hearing none, we need a roll call. Alderman Mike Hansel? Yes. Alderman Bobby Knight? Yes. Alderwoman Luanna Ottinger? Yes. Alderman Steve Smith? 
Vice Mayor Mike Profit. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Item F is the addition, the other addition to the agenda for the Newport Utilities Sewer System Project. And that again, that's, as we discussed earlier, that's uh, that's a, a fund that we uh, deposit money into um, when needed. The last time uh, they uh, they looked, and uh, according to their records, the last time we put money into it was in 2016. So uh, it's lasted for a while, and hopefully, maybe this this deposit will last as long. You never know. We've got multiple properties in town that are still on septic tanks. And uh, this fund was created to help folks get off the septic tank and onto the sewer. They chose not to hook up because their septic systems worked perfectly well at the time the sewer came through. And so the city agreed, that, and I looked it up a long time ago, it's, it's on the books, that the city agreed to do this uh, many years ago. Okay, James, just to be, uh, be clear, what are we approving here? It to be a ten thousand be ten thousand dollars because that we do it in ten thousand dollar increments okay. uh, is what we do each time, and so to approve a deposit of ten thousand dollars to NU to go into this fund that they maintain down there, we we write them a check. They maintain the fund. They spend out of it as needed, and they 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 usually notify us and let us know that they've had to spend some of it, okay. and so the. There was enough in there to do one, but we had two people ask for it, and there wasn't enough in there to do two. So okay. it's either just do one uh, for now, or go ahead and put the money back, uh, refund, replenish the fund so they can do both of them. Okay. And we, the motion is to, re your recommendation is to approve <coughs> replenishing the fund? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, you've heard the presentation uh, for. Uh, uh, to pay $10,000 replenish the fund for the Newport Utilities sewer system. Um, are there any questions to the, to the presentation? Hearing none, we will need uh, need a motion to approve. Okay. A motion by Alderman Knight. I'll second. And second by Alderman uh, Smith. <coughs> Excuse me, we need a roll call please. Alderman Mike Hansel. I will vote yes, but I think in the future that's something we probably need to look at a little closer. Alderman Bobby Knight. Yes. Alderwoman Luanna Ottinger. Yes. Alderman Steve Smith. Yes. Vice Mayor Mike Profit. Yes. Motion carries. Item 10. Is bids, purchases, and expenses. Item A, consideration of bids, purchase, bi digital mobile radios for the Newport Police Department. Mr. Mayor, we, we uh, if this is approved, we'll be purchasing those out of the drug fund. Uh, you all <coughs> have, I think, the general information that was offered to us. There is a bid that Sevier County put in for the radios that we would like, Kenwood programmable uh, ultra high frequency radios. Mike Jenkins of uh, Land Air Total Communications gave us a bid for each vehicle and in the installation and it came in just a few dollars higher than on duty depot, but on duty depots come with a caveat, if you're gonna use the trunking system, then we'll have to have the key. So the key is a firmware computer key, and it's not cheap. I've been informed it can be anywhere from $125 to $250 per radio if you have to purchase that key. So the, the key is included with the land our bid, and they have said they'll make a one, one day trip up here, bring three technicians, do all the installations and programming, and when that's complete, we'll be able to talk to our surrounding police agencies that are on the, the digital frequencies and our local sheriff's office as well as the Cock County school systems and their radios. So it's just a finalized step in getting us prepared to, to I guess, go into the 21st century finally with the radio system and, and try to get it all done. 
so it just uh, we'll actually end up having to buy about 25 units be seven in the unmarked cars 17 for the patrol cars because some of them will already be equipped so uh, that would be 541.50 per radio plus the cost of installation and it does include that trunking key and programming the radios I would say the only other expense would be if they go to hook up a radio and the antenna plug or something's bad, we may have to buy the antenna plug or a piece of coax, but it's not going to be a bunch of added expense. Chief, the 541.50 per radio is what's listed on your uh, invoice? Yes, that, that is the uh, bid price that Sevier County had bid and was approved and we're what's called piggybacking their bid. And that, what does that total come out to be if you're going to buy 25 radios? I'll have to defer. I think it's right under, well, the total request on this is 15093 uh, We, I'd like to put a budget amendment for 17000 just in case. <laughs> There's a little bit of something that shows up, if that's okay. So this, this will require a budget amendment? Yes, it will. And that was 17000 I would like to put it in just as a budgeted amount. Yeah. That way you're covered. No that would give us the money in the event. We had a broken antenna, a broken cable. Uh, one thing I know is the Motorola radio and the Kenwood radio have a different plug-in for the antenna cable, so it'll require a cable end to be clamped onto that and then screwed in the back of the radio. So, But our hope is to have them here with three technicians and getting a bay at the city garage and one be a, they probably have the radios programmed when they get here and they just start swap outs. Okay. But this does come from the Newport Police Department drug fund, correct? Correct. But we have to approve that making that purchase. Yes, you do. Well, it's, it's good for the drug dealers to help out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make a comment about Tina Matthews done a good job keeping everybody straight. She's got her work cut out for us with all of us. So we appreciate what you do, Tina. Thank you. Uh, I make the motion we uh, approve this purchase from Chief Schultz the Police Department. Okay. We have a second? All right, we have a motion on the board to approve the purchase of uh, how many radios? It should end up being 17 and 8, 25, because one of them will be a base station. We have a unit in our office. It's the same kind of radio, just plugs into the wall. Okay, so are we making the motion to for a budget amendment or for the actual purchase? Both. Well, it'll be a purchase and we'll need a budget amendment okay. put into the drug fund. All right. Okay, right. you've heard your presentation then. We will, uh, we have been properly seconded. Please approve by the norm sign of aye. Aye. And any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Do we need a roll call for that? Thank you all. All right. Yeah, item B is consideration of bids for purchase of two police vehicles for the Newport Police Department. Again, that, that is part of what we originally had planned to do for this year, but when COVID hit, we took two vehicles out of the budget, and, and we have been conferring with Ms. Matthews about the, the availability of funds to go ahead and put those back into a budget amendment, have the monies to buy and upfit those and I would tell you that our vendor who does those upfits just received 45 cars from another agency to equip so we're just in line where we're in line but they're good to try to get us in if they get a little break but we'd like to go ahead and get this started this will eliminate all the old cars that four or five people drove over some maybe six or seven at different times on different shifts and it'll have us all of our patrol units will all be Ford Explorer, police interceptors, and they'll all look the same and should operate the same as far as electronics, sirens, access to the weapons and all that stuff. So it's just uh, trying to move forward with trying to get our, keep updating our fleet. Okay. All right. We, um, we have, you've heard the presentation and with consideration of bids for purchase of two vehicles for the Newport Police Department. Looks like at a total cost of sixty-seven thousand six hundred and ninety dollars. But this is a this is a lease. This like we do all of them now. It's all it's a it's, it's a lease it's agreement. It's a lease agreement. Yes. Sir. Okay. But we're, we're not paying it. We're not paying all that out. We're doing a lease to own 
yeah, they'll be ours at the end of the lease, but we're not we're not spending all that much in one loan. Okay. Before we lock in that number, I just wanted to verify: does that include the upfit, the purchase, and the upfit? Mm. Let's see. I'm not sure that it does. I don't think so. The, what we're going to do is take an old police car and put as much of the stuff in it in the new one as we can. Uh, so it'll all be the same equipment again, but uh, <clears throat> that upfit is forty five hundred and something dollars per vehicle. If you're reusing the equipment, yeah. yes. If it was brand new, it'd be ten. But we're, we, that would include when we when we get done with that expense, the policeman will get handed the keys and go to work in it. So. Okay, so we worked on a lease agreement, but do we? We don't want to specify a total amount at this point. I would say 77. That way, you're taking your third 67, which is the two vehicles, and you said both of them will be partial, so about five thousand dollars, right under. So add ten thousand to what the base vehicle is, and come to 77. 77 thousand. Okay. All right. You've heard the presentation. Then we have a, a thoughtful consideration of bids for purchase of two police vehicles for the Newport Police Department on a lease agreement uh, for the total amount of $77,000 over the terms of the lease. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we require a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve the purchase of the two police vehicles. Second. Okay. We have a motion on the board to approve the purchase of two police vehicles. Um, it's been properly seconded. We'll approve, please approve by the by a roll call, please. Alderman Mike Hansel? Yes. Alderman Bobby Knight? Yes. Alderwoman Luanna Ottinger? Yes. Alderman Steve Smith? Yes. The Vice Mayor Mike Prophet? Yes. And if I could, I'd like to echo what Coach Prophet said. Uh, we really appreciate Tina and uh, the number crunching. Uh, she and I have been emailing every few minutes. It seemed like for the past couple of weeks getting all this information together and, and we truly appreciate you all helping us to continue to progress and get our fleet updated. Appreciate the job y'all did too. Thank you. Now well, outfitting a patrol car is not as easy as it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Okay, item 11 is comments from citizens. Well, Mayor, I'd, I'd like to take the opportunity to uh, congratulate somebody, uh, Tim. You stand up for me, please. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute, it's going to take a while. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of y'all know he gets <laughs> Tim uh, is, uh, his full-time job is down here with the city, but he has donated countless hours coaching the Newport Grammar School boys. I know because my grandson's been playing with him for three years. He's done a great job all three years, but this year is very special. They just qualified for the state tournament in Murfreesboro. They leave Thursday. I want to congratulate Ms. Burchett with the school support of the, the team. And, and I think uh, Tim's to be congratulated for all the hard work he's done, getting these boys this far. It's not, it's unusual for a city of our size or town of our, and county to get to any state tournament, and I think this is special. Well, I have to agree with you. Thank you. I've got, I've got 15 boys that uh, they get after it, and uh, believe me, they they got somebody barking up at them every every time they take a step during the game. Also, so so. The last three years I've gotten better because not barking at them as much or, or staying on them or, or trying to correct them during the game. Sometimes we just, that learning experience uh, is, is special. And those boys that I've got this year are special. And uh, they, I told them three years ago if they'd hang with me that we would play in that um, sectional uh, championship game and it would be up to them of how they progress through the year if they win it or not. And so they won the sectional, and now we get to go to uh, Murfreesboro. Uh, we are leaving Thursday. Uh, we uh, will play, oh goodness, uh, Ridgeview on uh, Friday at 5 o'clock Central Time. 
and it, it hopefully it'll be screened uh, through the uh, uh, through TMSA or through our uh, Newport Grammar School site, and we beat uh, a, a team. Um, Saturday that nobody thought we would have a chance with. Everybody that I talked to said, oh no, what, what are you doing? Uh, I, I had the confidence in them. And they went in and, and they played ball. And it's just like uh, Friday night. If we go do, we got a chance to bring home the state championship. And uh, uh, it's, it's special for our school and our town and these boys. And, and also there's a, a group of cheerleaders that are going with us too. So don't forget about those girls because they they scream and yell at them and, and form, form the whole game. So they even get on to the referees and the referees come and tell me, you're going to tell that cheerleader to shut up because she's going to get you a technical. <laughs> so, but it's a, it has been a special year for, for these kids and for our, our grammar school. And it's the toughest thing that I've ever done is uh, coaching those boys to where we're at right now. It's tough. Congratulations. Congratulations. And they also have a fundraising uh, going on to try to help uh, with the expenses of this trip. So anybody that would like to donate, you can talk to Tim or Ms. Burchett later tonight. Ms. Burchett. I would like to say, first of all, I wanted to say also, piggyback uh, Terry, that we're so proud and happy to have Tim coaching our boys. I think it's what I would call passionate about his job, no matter if it's doing his job down working for the city or coaching our boys. And even though he may get a small supplement, it's not anything for all the time he puts in. But as my husband used to say, what the sign of a good coach is one that keeps coaching to the last minute, no matter if they're winning or losing. They never quit that coaching. And we don't lose very many, but Tim is passionate to where he can barely talk at the end of every game. But he's very deserving. Our boys have done great. And, and we appreciate the support you all have given us, too. And, uh, and I wanted to say again, thank you for the money for our roof. As you saw with the pictures, we're in really bad need of it. But hopefully, we're going to be able to do some more things with our ESSER 2.0 money that we won't have to come down here and be begging you for money. James will be really happy to attend <laughs> for that. But we just appreciate the support. And you all think about us. And yes, we're planning on live streaming it. And hopefully, uh, I think they got permission from them to do that. But And that's really good because I, I watched it one night on live stream and it does do well. But thank you for sharing Tim with us and letting him coach for us. Katrina? Yes, I came in on the end of uh, the closure of the road. So I do have a question pertaining to the traffic on Jaybird and Melton. Mm -hmm. You know, they already speed from the housing projects and the apartments. They speed up the road. I mean, they fly. Carlene, she knows, you should know, Mr. Mayor. I do. Um, is there um, a thing that says you cannot have speed bumps? Yes. I've inquired about it. I've inquired about it several times, Trina. It's the <clears throat> the insurance. Our insurance will not allow it. Uh, there is not a law that says you cannot do it. But the, the, but our but insurance will not allow you to do it because the the the, da the potential damage that people could do with their vehicles running across it, busting the tire, knocking them out of line, and so on. If you do that, then you, then we are liable for any repairs that have to be done to a vehicle. So the insurance, uh, they, they don't, they won't, they won't let you do it. Your insurance company will not allow you to do it. What what I've noticed, James, uh, coming through every now and then, going home from Hedrick, over through the, the housing development there, they put up some rumble strips, mm -hmm. and uh, is that something that would be allowed as opposed to a uh, speed bump? I don't know. We The only thing we've ever been told is don't put anything in the street to impede the traffic because it, it can cause... Uh, the housing authority put those things in over there and the housing authority is responsible for them. 
uh, we are not we did not put those in and we are not responsible for them so um, that is something we could check with the insurance and ask them about but I know that I know their position on speed bumps because they, they they've talked to us about it too many times and they are uh, strongly opposed to them Believe me, I can put them over on Buckingham too if we could. I've checked on that too. Yeah, we've been, uh, as long as I can remember, we've been uh, asked to put those in different places of the city because of, of speeders, uh, and, uh, and it's just never been allowed. I think the rumble strips are becoming more of a viable option That's yeah. from cities. They don't, they don't seem to be very susceptible to damaging a, a car. I mean, it just, you know, I, I've come through there several times and it's, you can drive over, but it, it will slow you down if you want to see it, but. Okay, we'll, uh, can we check on that, James? If the rumble strips as opposed to um, speed bumps? Because we, the city was nice enough to put up two signs, basically it's uh, 20 miles per hour uh, speed limit. They, they don't even look at that anymore. Uh, it sure might as well not even be there. But uh, in any case, it'd be, it'd be nice to have something that slows folks down coming up through there. Anyone else? Gary? Lady, gentlemen, lady and gentlemen, um, people come and, and go in this life personally and professionally, and sometimes you have to say bye to them even if it makes you sad. About five years ago, a young cub reporter was sent to us to do the saddest and most unfortunate news in journalism, which is try to make a public meeting sound interesting. <laughs> and uh, tonight is Allison's final meeting. She's moving on to the next chapter. And I just wanted to tell her thank you for doing what you do and calling me if you have a question instead of reporting it and printing it inaccurately, which some plain talk reporters before you may or may not have done. I'm not going to speculate whether or not that's true. Uh, I don't have to speculate. I can, I can confirm that. But yeah, we'll have somebody new next month. And so just thank you, my friend. Uh, oh. Allison, do, did our, your replacement leave? Yeah. That's a bad sign. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure's already on here. Yeah. <laughs> you left after half a meeting? <laughs> okay. That was my bit. <laughs> if I could, I'd just like to say when Allison started to work here, I, I named her little girl, and I still call her little girl because she just looks like a kid. Ray Schneider and I go back to the early 80s so when I worked at the sheriff's office. So she's come and, and done a fantastic job, and when she came here, I didn't realize who she was till her mother called me and said, well, you keep an eye on my little girl. So, uh, we, we appreciate being able to work with her for the past five years. And, and uh, the, she's done a good job and has always uh, uh, been one of those who would call and ask you before she puts something in, uh, out of a police report. And uh, we have a great working relationship with all of our local media and we truly appreciate that. Are you at liberty to tell us where you're going? Um, I've accepted a patrol position with the county, so I'll oh, be... A patrol position? Yeah. She's going to still be here. She yeah, okay. yeah, I'll still be around, just not, yeah. I'm not used to talking at these meetings, I'm just, <laughs> just like sitting here, but I do want to thank you all for always like helping me and always willing to answer my questions when I did call. You all have been wonderful to work with. Okay, well thank you. At this point, if there's no other business to come before the council, Will it uh, entertain a motion to adjourn? Adjourn. Yeah. Second. All right. We are adjourned.